Many thanks for your company here on Joy News today. Now, to that particular uh, issue uh, about the Supreme Court directing the Electoral Commission to extend uh, the nomination day to tomorrow to allow all the presidential hopefuls in court over the issue of their disqualification time to correct their mistakes. Now, my colleague Fred Smith joins me in studio with more. Hello, Fred. Now, we know that the EC took the PPP to court uh, after the High Court directed that they be allowed to correct their mistakes. But the EC said they didn't agree with the decision of the judge, and so they took the issue to the Supreme Court. What led to this particular decision by the Supreme Court? Well, you know, we're running out of time. We have just a month to go. Today is November 7th. On December 7th, we're supposed to be voting. It's a constitutional requirement. And therefore, the Supreme Court is also mindful of this fact and the fact that several other disqualified aspirants were taking legal action against the Electoral Commission, and that uh, could jeopardize the entire election process. The Supreme Court, mindful of this, uh, decided just a while ago that all cases be put on hold. Then the Electoral Commission should extend the uh, filing of nomination period to 8th of November 2016. That's tomorrow. And so whatever errors that were on the nomination forms, for which reason the Electoral Commission rejected, uh, they must be corrected and be returned. Mm. I'll let you hold on here while I get onto the phone with lawyer uh, Opong, and he'll give us some legal understanding on this particular directive by the Supreme Court. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Mr. Opong. What does this really mean in the legal sense? Oh, well, I think it's rather in terms of the fact uh, what actually happened. Well, I think the, the terms are clear, and this one, I would be surprised if anybody will struggle to understand. And I think that if anybody does so, then they rather uh, relate to uh, not uh, the person lacking the readiness to accept or refusing to accept the term. So just go give opportunity, but I still hold the view as I have before. Uh, give opportunity may not necessarily mean that you must of necessity be declared a uh, candidate. I think it's the EC is to believe that some so-called errors are not errors at all. I think they, they, they themselves may be engaging in, in an illegality if they were to endorse such uh, so-called errors which rather relate to possible commission of an offense. All right, Mr. Opong, I, I really understand what you're saying, but this is the reason uh, I believe the EC took this particular case to court, uh, that they wanted the, the, the Supreme Court to judge on the matter of criminality and how some of these errors border on criminality and not mere clerical errors. So in this particular case, what can the EC do? The highest court of the land has spoken. Well, I'm not very sure that the EC went to court to the Supreme Court to determine whether or not uh, the so-called errors constituted possible or allegations of fraud or criminality. They, the grounds are clear. I mean, one of them is that the judge exceeded his jurisdiction. The other one is error of law mm. on the face and so on. It is all about if the, the government is whether or not the EC should automatically cause errors to be amended or ratified, empire rectified, or altered. And the Supreme Court, I think, affirmed, affirmed that uh, part of their, of their relief, uh, that the court exceeded in that sense. But standing, they should afford them opportunity to be heard on the matter. And I think that that still affirms the discretion that the EC has. Of course, which must be exercised within the terms of the laid down established uh, rules and principles of law. All right, Mr. Opong, before we let you go, does this particular directive uh, mean that all the other cases being heard in court as regards disqualification by some presidential aspirants, uh, disqualification of some presidential aspirants by the EC uh, should be ruled out as well? Well, my information is that the, the court was quite clear that such proceedings are to be stayed. Uh, 
Hello, Mr. Mr. Opaum. Can you hear me? Could you please say that again? We lost you. I'm saying that, uh, from what I know, the court has that those cases be stay in court. And staying, in my view, does not mean that the matter has been is determined or is non-existent. So that's how I see it. All right, thank you very much for your time, Mr. Pong. Lawyer Pong has been giving us some uh, legal insights into that particular directive by the Electoral Commission asking uh, that the nomination time or period given to president, presidential aspirants be extended to tomorrow, November 8, to allow them correct mistakes in their form. So briefly before you go, um, have you been speaking to any of the political aspirants and, well, the, and well, their parties? Not yet. The decision was made a few minutes ago and so that opportunity hasn't come yet but the question now that uh, now that this decision has been made the question we'll be asking is what happens to the criminal element of this case mm -hmm. we know that the CID were informed about the criminality somebody subscribing for one person here and then in another region and somebody also thumbprinting or signing the signature of another person all of these things are uh, criminal issues that the CID is working on. What becomes of this? Does this case mean that everything has been quashed? Mm -hmm. What becomes of those who are contesting for the presidency if they have criminal cases? So all of these questions are beginning to come up, but as I said, uh, the story is just breaking, and with time, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure we'll get understanding uh, And we'll definitely pick up uh, some reaction from the EC uh, as well as their lawyers. But before you go, so uh, currently, what are the cases in court as regards uh, this particular issue about presidential aspirants being disqualified? Well, we know there are about eight cases in court challenging the Electoral Commission's decision, and uh, if you recall, that one that was heard today at the Supreme Court it was a challenge brought by the Electoral Commission itself following Dr. Papakwisi Indom's victory at the High Court. Uh, they went there to challenge the decision that said that allow Dr. Indom to correct the mistakes and present the form. Now, the Electoral Commission went and the court has even expanded what the, the High Court what? said and said, afford everybody the opportunity to correct the mistakes and bring them back in. Thank you very much, Fred Smith. Fred Smith is my colleague here. Join news. We'll be following this particular case closely and bring you more updates. Stay with us. This is your election headquarters.